by self-determination, equality, fairness, responsibility, affirmation, valuing others, acknowledgement of the interdependence of all life forms. There's a little birdie. That's another life form. form. And respect uh, for others. So it's about really choice and self-determination and about trying to fight against um, oppression in all its various forms, whether it be sexism, racism, um, homophobia, ableism, everything that is that discriminates or, or, or anything that, that, that is oppressive of a certain group of people. And not just certain groups of people, but the environment, all that type of stuff. So, given that sort of lens, um, you know, feminists oftentimes talk about issues of patriarchy, and I just sort of mentioned that. Patriarchy is just this larger idea that um, ideas and values that have been associated with masculine, men and masculinity become sort of the values that are privileged in a given culture. But it's just like the technology, pretty ubiquitous. It's almost invisible because, you know, it's not invisible. We all know uh, that uh, there are glass ceilings uh, and women don't get the same pay as, as men do and all that type of stuff. Um, but it becomes such a part of how we look at the world um, that sometimes we don't notice it. We are a fish in the water, and patriarchy is the water. Um, so it's bigger than people, per se. It's all these values that, that, uh, that you know, float around, these ideologies that float around. So, for instance, even though things have changed, when we... I don't have any kids, but I know some of you have kids. Uh, what do we oftentimes do to our children, um, thinking of our family? Boys wear blue, girls wear pink, um, girls play with certain toys, boys play with certain toys, and we are teaching them norms of gender. Feminists want to sort of upset that a little bit. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff out there. We did talk about identity before, so gender versus sex. Sex is the biological, gender is the social construction of how we think people should behave and act and communicate in light of sex. So we have these gender norms. Women should be like this. Men should be like this, even though that binary thinking is very, very um, problematic. A lot of research, particularly when it comes to issues of media and social construction, uh, indicate, and this is not me just making this up. I know it's not in the book, but oftentimes women are sort of um, portrayed as needing others, dependent, whereas men are independent uh, women oftentimes are portrayed as you know, not knowing how to do stuff or incompetent men are the authority figures women are portrayed as the primary caregivers men as the breadwinners it's all I mean, basically leave it to beaver uh, women as victims and objects of sexual desire video games men as the aggressors and all this stuff becomes uh, naturalized even though you know, it's it's a betrayal. It's not real. In some cases, it is real, but it's very problematic to think that this is the way it has to be. Okay. So, again, the thesis, I think, is really, really important, and I really like this chapter because it's taking that sort of more critical um, idea about issues of oppression and looking at how... ICT and CMC works within a family setting. Long story short, I mean, it's just, it, it, it sustains some of the stereotypes. That's basically what it is. So, for instance, um, in that first little section, they talk about gender and technology. And here are some of the basic arguments that they make. Gender construction constrains women's use of tech outside gender norms. So given our gender norms, they say that women use tech in light of gender norms. Thank, I hit right to some place here, thank Pinterest. It's sort of an online scrapbook as sort of an example of a woman's art, if it is, um, and how it is used by women. A hell of a lot more women are on Pinterest than men, although I am, because I like to look at fashion. I can look at fashion. 
option to that. Um, also, they say technology is imbued with a masculine identity. So if, if technology itself had an identity, it would be a man. And this is Siri. Hi, how are you? How's it going, Siri? I am well. I think you're pretty. I'm just well put together. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. Weird. Um, the way our um, world sort of works is they argue that men seem more at ease with technology and that men create technology for women to use. Um, again, um, it's, it does, comes from a lot of studies, but that's sort of the, uh, the argument. Um, but when you think of inventors, all that type of stuff, what, who comes to mind, a man or a woman? It's problematic, but that's, that's what they're getting at. Uh, women tend to see both men and women as tech experts, yet men, they argue, just see other men as tech experts. Um, we have this idea that uh, the mechanistic ideology of rationality over emotionality, so that's generally the whole, you know, rational thought, just think like a man, versus, oh, don't be so emotional. So the idea of the machine, the mechanism of technology is rational codes and all that type of stuff and not emotional. But Siri, do you have emotions? I'm sorry, Jason. I'm afraid I can't answer that. That's a point or something. I don't know. Um, they do say, though, women, I guess using tech for better at social interaction, so using technology to socialize, 